This is Dr. Laurel Morton, a fellow at Skin Care Physicians. Uh, my name is Dr. Deanne Robinson. I'm one of the physicians here at Skin Care. And today we're going to discuss the use of um, laser and light sources for the treatment of post-procedure purpura. Dr. Morton, can you tell us a little bit about post-procedure purpura and your approach to treating these patients? Yeah, so I think that one of the most popular minimally invasive procedures are injection-based. Botulinum toxin, um, as well as soft tissue fillers, and people like them because they have decreased side effects, they're very convenient, and also because they have significant results that are somewhat elusive. But when you cause a bruise uh, from a procedure you've done, you kind of negate that aspect of privacy for the patient, um, decreases the patient satisfaction. So luckily, we have a lot of devices that can be used to treat the bruises that show up um, after these minimally invasive procedures. And in particular, we like to use pulse dye laser, and uh, other devices that can be used are um, that also target hemoglobin include uh, intense pulse light or even the long pulse 1064 NTI laser. Wonderful. So if you have a patient who, say, yesterday you did a hyaluronic acid based filler on and they call today and say, hey, you know, I have a larger bruise than I expected. What's your approach to treating this patient? What's the optimal timing? What device would you use? And just give us a, a small range of settings that you think would be appropriate. Yeah, the next day call is actually great because we find treating bruises one or two days after the procedure is more effective than trying to do it immediately after the procedure has been done. Probably the first, the go-to laser that we use is the pulse dye laser. Uh, we have a V-beam. Uh, several studies have been published, small studies, that report a range of settings from a fluence of 6 to about 7.5, a pulse duration of about 6 milliseconds, and a, a spot size of about 10 millimeters. It is important to make sure that your settings are sub -preferred. So for some of the, um, for some devices, you may choose to use a uh, larger pulse, a longer pulse duration, even 10 milliseconds, um, and start on the, the lower fluence levels just to make sure you're not causing any purpura. Um, you can also use intense pulse light. We usually recommend uh, the same settings you would use for photo rejuvenation. And as I mentioned before, some people have success with a long pulse 1064 NDEI as well. You might consider uh, doing several passes to increase uh, the efficacy of your treatment or even treating uh, to several, two or three days in a row if necessary. Great. So we all know that some of these devices, such as the pulse dye, can cause purpura. So our goal in treatment is a sub setting. And then instead of pulse stacking, um, repeated passes if necessary. Definitely. Definitely. It's a good, good way to start. Wonderful. And what do you tell these patients for aftercare, after their um, late or light or laser treatment for purpura? Yeah, usually people tolerate it very well. We kind of explain that the procedure may be a little uncomfortable. Afterwards, they sometimes have a little increased erythema or a little bit of edema. Uh, but they should expect if the treatment worked for the, the breathing to improve really over the next day or two. So they, they should see much more rapid improvement than a, than a bruise would otherwise, otherwise evolve. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much for your expertise. And we will employ these methods to help our patients in post-procedure purpura. Thanks okay. so much. No problem.